This is a famous letter, August 21, 1790, by George Washington to the synagogue in Newport, Rhode Island. The synagogue wrote him a letter, and in that letter, it was the classic letter. It was the letter that every Jewish community writes to every new king throughout Jewish diasporic life. The letter said, wow, you're amazing, you're handsome, you're tall, thank you so much for being our king, we are super loyal. I'm paraphrasing. And Washington wrote back a letter that no leader has ever written to Jews. No leader could ever write to Jews. He starts the letter, he comes back to it here, so I'm going to go with it. It's, um, this is the part I like because it's funny. It would be inconsistent with the frankness of my character, I'll be honest, not to avow that I'm pleased with your favorable opinion of my administration. What's he doing? He's making fun of them, I think. Don't tell anyone I said that. And fervent wishes for my felicity. Now, maybe this is just gentlemanly politeness by a Virginia gentleman. But I also think that letter was a bit much, and he was a little bit offended by the outpouring of, what do you call it? What? The flattery. And he's saying that. And the reason I think he's saying that is this. It is now, they say, this is going to be a country, a government of tolerance, of toleration. And he says, no, absolutely not. I refuse to tolerate you. Why do I refuse to tolerate you? It is now no more that toleration is spoken of as if it were the indulgence of one class of people that another enjoyed the exercise of their inherent natural rights. What do you mean I should tolerate you? What are you saying if you're saying I should tolerate you? That's my country and your guests, right? But you're not guests. It's your country. Your rights are yours. They're not mine to give. For happily, the government of the United States, which gives to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance, requires only that they who live under its protection should demean themselves as good citizens in giving it on all occasions their effectual support. Which gives to bigotry no sanction and to persecution no assistance is quoting the original letter from the community. Um, which, but he doesn't acknowledge that he's quoting, so I think he knows this letter is going to be maybe remembered. I don't know. I, but what, what is he saying? Yeah, you can say it. Yeah, out loud. You, I mean, you have nothing to worry about, so this flattery isn't necessary. You're safe. A, it's not necessary, but I think it even goes stronger than not necessary. All of them that there are like multiple groups that are saying you're all equal or all American. You're all here. But he's also saying... To, th to think that I need to tolerate you is to misunderstand what's happening here. It's not just to misunderstand what's happening, it's to tell me you're just another king. You're just another European government. Whatever you call yourself, president. No, this is different. This is really different. This is an experiment no one's ever tried before and we're going to make it work. You are not tolerated here with all the caveats you know, which is that, you know, America was not offering this to everybody in America at the time. But this is an expression of a new kind of relationship. The Jews arrive in America between 1881 and 1921, millions of Jews arrive in America, and they immediately start building out this massive institutional universe that still exists to a large extent. A hundred years later, the Federation system today is the second largest charitable network in America after the United Way. Both of them are in decline, but it's still the second biggest. It's billions of dollars. And that Jewish experience over the last hundred years, from let's say 1921 until today, is an experience of this. Folks, this was a promise. What's the promise of America to American Jews? that you're no longer in the diaspora. You are home. You are American. We are now in the world of liberal American democracy. You belong. You are safe. In the Russian Empire, you were not Russian. You were Jewish. By the way, in passports, including in communist times. Yeah.
And in America, you are utterly American. No one knows what it means for you to be anything but American. You want to also be Jewish? Great. You want to also be a mountain bike rider? Great. But you're American. That's a promise of an end to the diaspora. That's a promise of an end to the life contingent on others. It is no more that toleration is spoken of as if it were the indulgence of one class of people that another should enjoy their inherent natural rights. Over those hundred years, wow, that did not develop well into this uh, slide. That promise came true. And it didn't just come true. Making sure that promise comes true is the deepest anxiety at the heart of American Jewish life and culture. It is why American Jews are obsessed, no offense, with the black experience. It is why Heschel marched with King in Selma. It is why the Civil Rights Bill of 1964, the first draft, was written in the Religious Action Center of the Reform Movement in Washington. It is why the white kid killed in the lynches of the Freedom Riders was definitely going to be a Jewish kid. It is why the white people in the room at the founding of the NAACP were called Moskowitz. The Jews are obsessed with the black experience. Why? Connect the dots. Bigger than that. In other words, they have empathy. No. They do have empathy. Jews are amazing. But, no, it's bigger. Yes. If, if in the very country that you feel at home, they're treating another population like this, it's very eager to see things turn. What is America? Is America the liberal promise? It had better be. Because what if it isn't? And where has the American liberal promise always, always, generation after generation, gone to die? The black experience. Whither goes black America, there goes America itself, there go the Jews. Everybody with me? 87% of black Americans voted, of black voters, voted Obama. And the second highest group at 84% were the Jews. This is true across generations because it is the litmus test of America. Folks, the promise of liberalism came true. You're always worried about it. You're always testing it. What's the trauma of the last two months for so many American Jews? Yeah. Failure, Failure of? Somehow, over on the liberal edge, illiberalism popped over and started talking to us about our being oppressors and our being, right? Somehow it came from, the, it, went, it did a loop-de-loop. -loop. The illiberalism that might risk America not being what, and so I, folks, I went on a 10-day speaking tour in America. I came back two weeks ago. I have spent, I have gone to five funerals. I have friends in the war. I have two brothers-in-law in the war in Gaza. I have to tell you, I'm, the American Jews I met were a lot more frightened than the Israeli Jews I left behind. The Israeli Jews feel like they have agency, strength, the ability to affect their world. American Jews are watching things happen that they don't understand and that risk everything because everything is the American liberal promise. There's, that's the homeland. It's not America. It's Ameri the America's liberal promise. Okay? You with me?